On the street, all seems peaceful and quiet at Steve and Christy Carson's Southern California home. But listen closely, and you'll hear a different story. And it has nothing to do with the couple's two young daughters. I think there's something alive in our walls, and nobody's been able to solve it. I hear scratch, scratch, scratch. It used to happen just at night, and now I'm up there sewing and spending more time, so I actually hear it at all times during the day. I think it's rodents. Drives me nuts, because she's going nuts. We have put traps in the attic, and they have not caught anything, and I've found no rodent droppings up in the attic. I kind of still think it's rats or mice, but I don't know what it is, and I want it fixed. When I'm up here, I hear it like sound just like this. Right, and do you hear anything? Yeah, I hear the same thing, but there's a bathroom right over here. There's and, a bathroom right here. And the hot water heater's right below, so I figure hot water pipes might be coming up to the bathroom. The water heater's directly below us? Yes, it is. Hmm, that's interesting. Let me have a look at this wall. I'm gonna listen with my stethoscope and see if I hear anything. You got something's definitely going on here. I can hear something inside the wall right here. Wow, have you felt this wall? It's pretty warm. It's pretty warm. It's on fire it's warm. It's hot. Yeah. That is incredibly warm. And that doesn't make any sense at all. Let's take a look at this. Let me take a shot of this wall. 68, 80, 96 degrees? You're kidding me. You know, this wall's so hot, I'm concerned that we have a potential fire hazard here. Wow. Yeah, wow. So we need to go downstairs. Show me where the water heater is. A vent pipe on the roof above the bonus room offers another major clue. Check out the moisture that's on the joint of that flue. That's a telltale sign that maybe that flu is not drafting properly. I see some corrosion, which tells me it's been happening for a while. Well, the concern right now is because we have so much heat on that wall that has that flu failed, has it corroded from the inside out, and now we've got an open flu in the wall. Wow. That kind of kills my mice theory. It probably just kills the mice. mice, mice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's trace that back to wherever it's gone. I'm going to turn this water heater up all the way. Now I'm going to jump up here. See, this flu... It should be naturally drafting. And right now, maybe because it's not installed properly or because it's blocked or because it's not the right size, it's not drafting properly. I'm gonna put my mirror against the draft hood. If, the, if my mirror fogs up, it could indicate that this water heater is not drafting or drawing properly and carbon monoxide may be spilling into the garage. So as you can see, I don't even, I don't even need to put a carbon monoxide detector on, right. on this. Foggy. I mean, it's fogging up, which tells us that Heated gas is escaping from the top of the water heater. Is it enough carbon monoxide when the doors are closed to create a potential any, hazard? Any carbon monoxide is a potential hazard. Wow. So. The question is, where is it failing? Next, we check the flue leading from the water heater and furnace. Oh my goodness. Look at that. What is that? That looks like corrosion. That looks like the flue is starting to corrode from the inside out. Wow, look at that. That's quite a bit. That is quite a bit. It's all, what are all the different colors? Those is that the inside? aluminum flakes and rust corrosion. So you got these, this is rust and this is aluminum flakes. So the flue is corroding from the inside out. And as I look up this flue, I'm actually seeing corrosion as well. And here, give you a little finger pull there. Pull it right towards you. Oh, wow. wow, wow. How do we do? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Pretty darn good. Look is at the moisture, moisture stains here. Wow. wow. Open, let's get that open as we take a look, yeah, closer look is. at this. Yeah, this is extremely <laughs> hot. Look at this. Yeah. Now we have a joint right here. So we got condensation coming off of this right here. Look at this. Look at this is even resting. This is all incorrect. We're supposed to have one inch clearance to anything that'll burn inside this wall. And as you can see, we only have maybe three eighths of an inch right here. What can happen is we heat this wood over and over again okay. at the flash point that in which this wood would catch on fire gets decreased with every heating and cooling cycle. Wow. So eventually this wood could have ignited. Right now, you can see that the flue is in contact with the back of the drywall. It's supposed to have three-eighths of an inch clearance airspace from the drywall, the back of the drywall, to the flue. And as you can see, right now, we do not have that. That's why the wall was so hot. There's only one more piece to this puzzle, and it's on the roof. Can you believe the corrosion? Yeah, but more importantly than the corrosion, look how they've pinched this when they installed it, and they completely choked it off. It's no wonder it's backdrafting. It can't draw. Yeah. Finally, we know enough to solve this mystery. On the roof, the top of the flue was choked off, causing combustion fumes to back up. The excessive heat triggers condensation in the walls of the flue, corroding the metal from the inside. The fumes are then backdrafting at the improper T-connector for the water heater and furnace, allowing carbon monoxide to escape into the garage. 
and the mysterious scratching sound led to it all. What do you think is this scratching sound that I hear? You know, I have a, an instinct is telling me that what you're hearing is the interior of the flue, the particles that we were able to see down in the garage that look like look like fairy dust. Okay. The inside of it is starting to wow. deteriorate, and that's what you're hearing. It's probably it's probably oh, okay. running that down the in, inside of the flue. It's, it's raining it's aluminum good. particles. Mystery solved. So now, here's the fix. We'll remove and replace the entire flue inside the wall, this time with proper clearances. Install double insulated flue pipe with a Y connector. Add a new rain cap and storm collar to keep the exterior moisture from getting in. So we, we need to get this up above the roof, so try to push that all the way up and through the flashing. Good. That's good, right, right there. there. All right. And I'll hold this piece. Okay. Now we need another five foot piece. That one's got to go through the floor. Okay. Now make sure, before you drop that in, we got to make sure that we're putting it in in the right direction. Look at this arrow okay. right here. It says that the flow is this direction, okay. so just double check. Okay, Good, perfect. I'm arrows up. There's one more piece that goes in. This okay. one foot piece has got to pop in here. Okay. Again, just make sure that our directional arrow is pointed up. Okay. Now see if you can snap that right in here. Okay. On the roof, Steve applies a layer of roofing mastic to seal the joint between the new flue and the shingles. He has a storm collar to keep out moisture and a rain cap tops off the exterior part of the fix. Installing tight metal straps on the new flue will keep it securely in place, away from the back of the drywall. Good, so the solution of keeping it away from the wall has been resolved. It's been resolved. Good. Your okay. troubles right now as far as that flue are over. Good. All we need Good. to do now is drywall it. We got a drywall and we're gonna be done. Good. And we're gonna go home. All right. Are you ready for that? I am. You're already home. <laughs> We're ready to get rid of the carbon monoxide leaking into the garage below. Steve's cut the old flue out of the ceiling and is getting a crash course in ventilation systems from our HVAC specialist, John Kopp. Even though that water heater has a three inch collar in this application because it's a combination vent, we have to size it to a four inch. All right, Steve, so you've been down here with these guys. What, what have you learned? Well, I've learned they need to have at least a one inch spacing between the actual the metal of the flue and the drywall. So we're putting that fire stop in because it's required at the ceiling and floor lines in case a fire breaks out or that's going to stop the fire from spreading into the wall cavity. What, what are the next steps? Well, once we get this covered up, we're going to drywall in the corner and bring it up and then repatch it and make it look like that this never happened. Steve, this is a twist lock fitting. You're going to love this. Just goes right up there and twists and locks. All right. Wow, what a big improvement that is. So you got the Y in, it's just looking so much better than what it looked like before. Look at the huge difference here. This, this is what was in there before, and this is what's going in now. Can you see the tremendous difference between oh, now a, and then? We're getting a 12 inch straight up, straight rise. Yeah, we gotta go up 12 inches before we make our 90. This is Correct. the way it's supposed to be, this is the way it was. That's why it wasn't venting properly. And the new pipes and connectors all have double wall insulation, which is the key to solving our original mystery. It's for insulation purposes, so the, the the exhaust temperatures don't drop before it exits the uh, Correct. The, chimney. the single wall is only single insulated. Yeah, it so sucks the, the heat gases. out of it. Correct. And then you get condensation and the moisture drains back okay. in, which is actually the root of our problem. John taught you a lot in the last couple hours, didn't he? I was listening. <laughs> Good for you. Now it's just a matter of putting the pieces together for John and his quick study student. It's so much easier than, you, than trying to line it up and screwing everything together, I tell you. There's a strap that should be on this and holding this up. We're not supposed to be putting all this weight on these elbows. Wow. <laughs> wow is right. Pretty cool, huh? It wow. looks fantastic. You did a good job. Huge difference from before. The biggest difference is now we have proper directional connections up and away from the appliances, quarter inch per foot like we're supposed to have. And we have the proper draft stop we have proper supporting. Everything looks fantastic. So take the mirror, hold it directly up against the draft here, right. hold it there for a second or two, and then look at yourself in the mirror. Is there any fog or any moisture? No. No, it's, it's perfect. It's all clear. It looks great. It's very great. clear. It's drafting wonderfully. Not only have we taken care of the mysterious scratching noises in the wall, we've also corrected several dangerous hazards along the way. Well, I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm so happy. It's amazing what that little scratching sound led to. All the potential problems. Fire potential problem, the carbon monoxide. Maybe I should get my hearing checked.